meeting is now called to order. Board members, um, all board members are present, so therefore we have a quorum. Um, we've all had an opportunity to review the agenda. Um, is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Dr. Harrison has moved. Um, Dr. Luckett has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 There being no nays, the motion is approved. Next on the agenda, we have the approving of the minutes. Um, board members, we've had an opportunity to review the minutes in advance. Is there a motion to approve the minutes for April 6, 2021 and April 26, 2021? So moved. So moved. Second. Um, Ms. Hilliard has moved. Dr. Sebeck has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Um, now we are ready for the superintendent's report. Dr. Green. Thank you, President Johnson, board members, um, to all of the uh, team members and community members who've joined us. We'll begin as we typically do with our uh, highlights reel from the instructional television team. This week, we celebrate Teacher Appreciation Week. And while it's always important to recognize how much teachers matter, this past year is especially significant. Many educators have worked around the clock to move their teaching online or to a hybrid format while continuing to support our scholars. Remote or hybrid learning can make it tough to show teachers how much you really care. But there are still plenty of great options like e-cards and thank you videos, or classroom goodies, gift cards, and decorations. We encourage you to show our teachers how much you care for them this week with a token of your appreciation. At Jackson Public Schools, we celebrate our awesome teachers. Registration for returning scholars in Jackson Public Schools is currently open for the 2021-2022 school year and can be completed online through our mobile app. Parents and legal guardians should download the JPS app and log into their active parent account to complete registration. You may also visit the district's website at www.jackson.k12.ms.us for additional information on our online registration. Registering for pre-K and kindergarten is now easier than ever. Visit the Jackson Public Schools website at www.jackson.k12.ms.us for an enrollment application and a list of the required documents that you'll need to complete and bring to your appointment. To make an appointment, click on your child's zone school to sign up for a time slot to complete the registration process. Having a set schedule will help to limit the number of people on each campus in adherence to current health guidelines. Please ensure that you have all the required documents prior to arriving for your appointment. Priority registration ends May 13th. Themed Reading Palooza, the 2021 Summer Reading Program has kicked off with help from Midday Diva, Tambra Cherie. Cherie is serving as the 2021 Summer Reading Ambassador. She'll help us promote the reading program throughout the community and encourage our scholars to remain engaged and read lots of books. Cherie is best known as one of the community's favorite radio personalities and has several national television credits. This summer's reading expectations are all scholars are required to read a district selected book and complete a reading log. All students must choose two additional titles and complete a reading log. The goal is for all scholars to read at least three books, but we certainly encourage more. To further encourage our scholars' reading enjoyment, we will provide incentives for them to complete reading challenges beyond the minimum requirement in order to win exciting prizes. If you want to know something more about chemistry or whales or cars or athletes or dance, 
whatever that is, uh, there are all kinds of books out there. And so lots of opportunities for young people, well, not just young people, for all of us to read and to explore our interests and to sharpen our skills. To obtain summer reading logs, require reading lists, and details on our Summer Reading Incentive Program, visit our Summer Reading webpage. The district's mobile app is now available. Get access to news, the district's directory, and so much more. Search for Jackson Public Schools, Mississippi to download it on Google Play and the Apple App Store. For more information about Jackson Public Schools, please visit our website at www.jackson.k12.ms.us. Follow us on Facebook at Jackson Public Schools and on Twitter at JPS District. You can also watch all JPS programming on YouTube at JPS ITV and on Comcast channels 18 and 19. I want to say thank you as always to our team uh, for that uh, wonderful highlights reel. Just really appreciate their work in pulling together all those wonderful uh, stories and, and pieces of news for what's happening around the district. Excited about the summer reading palooza. Lots of opportunities to get more and more young people uh, reading books and finding that just right book that, that they will fall in love with and hopefully set them on a path to reading uh, for the rest of their lives. So again, thanks to all for that information. Uh, I'll ask again, board members, put you on the spot. Has everyone downloaded the JPS app? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Dr. Luckett had it on the, at the ready. Yes, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. And uh, to all of our team members, as I'm asking you, to all of our team members, we should have downloaded the JPS app as well. No excuses. I think we'll add that to the next evaluation. All right. Um, also, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. It, it helps us to gain a little more um, uh, flexibility with YouTube in terms of uh, what we're able to, to, um, uh, to demonstrate or to show without ads and that sort of thing. All right. Uh, I want to inform you, uh, board members, and to all of our guests this evening that we have submitted our ESER 2, ESER 2, the second of the ESER uh, elementary and secondary school uh, emergency relief fund grant applications. We've submitted it um, uh, during the recent uh, stakeholder and community conversations. We shared three major areas of focus uh, for addressing and the impact of the pandemic that's um, basically addressing scholars learning, uh, continued learning and, and providing a well-rounded and compelling academic program for them. Also improving our school facilities and indoor air quality. And then lastly, meeting the social, emotional and, and mental health needs of our scholars and families. And so uh, I'd like to thank Working Together Jackson uh, and our JPS for co-hosting the community conversations, we gained invaluable uh, feedback uh, that will help guide our decision-making as we continue to move forward uh, in supporting the ongoing needs of our scholars and families and communities. We will continue to listen to stakeholders and work with our various community partners to ensure that our ESER 3, the third round of funding uh, and the application for that funding is, is both responsive to the needs and capitalizes on these one-time uh, funds or this one-time infusion of funds. For the latest updates on our ESER funding and our plans for the use of that funding, please visit the JPS website at www.jackson.k12.ms.us. To all of our parents out there, I wanna urge you to please take advantage of our online registration for the 21-22 uh, school year. Um, parents and legal guardians of returning JPS scholars can complete registration online using the active parent registration portal. Uh, it's quick and easy. I'm hearing that uh, you can register your uh, each child in probably just a few minutes. 
Uh, and, and I believe one of our team members registered three of their children and, and less than 10. So it's tracking, it's quick and easy. Y'all please use it and, and go and register your, your, your youngsters. If you need help with your active parent username or password, please send an email to support active parent, all one word, support active parent at jackson.k12.ms.us or simply call us at 601-960-8849. That's 601-960-8849. And for new students, uh, including our pre-K and kindergarten uh, scholars, we uh, enrollment will be done by appointment only because there's some documentation and, and whatnot that needs to be taken care of. So for a list of the required documents needed and to schedule an, an appointment, um, parents and, and legal guardians should go to our website. Again, that's www.jackson.k12.ms.us or call us at 601-960-8852 for more details. All of that's on our website. So, you know, when in doubt, just go to our website and you'll be able to find the links there. You matter. This is a special message for all of our amazing JPS scholars. As we come to the end of this school year, and oh my goodness, what a school year it's been. I want our scholars to know that you matter. I'm encouraging all of our scholars to connect with their teachers, um, to really lean in, don't give up in these last few weeks, connect with your staff and your peers, anyone who can help you to excel inside and outside of the classroom. As a part of the You Matter re-engagement effort, our district is offering summer school for our scholars to reconnect, to catch up, um, to accelerate, to stay on track uh, for promotion and for graduation. Even though we only have a few weeks left, and can you believe it? We only have a few, le few weeks left, folks. Uh, it's not too late to re-engage for the fourth term. We are here to support and cheer you on every step of the way, scholars. For more information or how we can help you to succeed, please visit our website again. That's www.jackson.k12.ms.us or speak with your principal or your teachers. They're eager to help you. You matter. Teach JPS Thursdays. That's our virtual hiring events. Um, the JPS Office of Recruitment is hosting Teach JPS Thursdays as a part of our virtual hiring series for the spring of 2021. I attended two of these in the, the uh, latest one just earlier today. Uh, and I must say that it was amazing to see how many people want to join the JPS team. Um, really excited by that. I, I truly appreciate the creativity and the thoughtfulness that our team used to create those opportunities and for us to meet prospective uh, candidates. At this time, I want to invite our JPS recruiter, Dr. Tommy Knowles, to join us to share just a little more information about Teach JPS Thursdays. Dr. Knowles. Good evening, uh, Dr. Green, Ms. Johnson, board members. Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm hoping that I'm doing this right. I am uh, getting ready to share at this time our uh, spring 2021 staffing report. And um, as a part of that, our uh, information regarding our Teach JPS Thursdays will be a part, but we wanted to just take this opportunity to uh, share information regarding staffing for uh, Jackson Public Schools as it stands this current spring and, and what our projections are looking like toward uh, the beginning of school and fall of 2021. Uh, so uh, the work that we do in my department um, falls under commitment three regarding talented and empowered teams. And um, we, we do know and understand that scholars achievement is improved when they're taught by educators who know them as individual learners a big part of the work that I do is committed to making sure that our candidate pools are established and improved. So a huge amount of the work that we do goes towards developing uh, those pools and screening and uh, educating really the candidates as it relates to their capacity um, 
and and uh, the influences that we have on scholar achievement. Uh, most importantly, the school teacher and the principal. So the essential questions that we're looking to answer during this presentation is what is our current staffing situation? Uh, what are our current initiatives that we are implementing and undergoing to address our projected vacancy needs in hard to fill areas for the upcoming school year? Um, and we really just wanted to provide an update on our staffing and provide information on those initiatives and, and what's being utilized to address all areas and concerns. So before we jump into the initiatives, we wanted to do just a quick data review. As always, uh, when we start the school year, our goal is to start our staffing with 100% certified staff or certified teacher in every JPS classroom. So that's that's been our goal for the past uh, three years since I've been in this particular position. Um, and we're striving every day, uh, putting things in place to help us reach that goal. Uh, before we get into the numbers, I just wanted to take a moment and kind of define some of the terms that we'll be using. One is true vacancies, uh, and we come to the number of our true vacancies by adding our limited service positions uh, to our positions that are not filled. When you hear me speak of a limited service teacher, those are teaching positions that are filled with non-certified personnel, which basically function as long-term substitutes or any teacher that may be certified but is currently teaching uh, out of their area of certification. And then uh, of course our positions not filled, these are vacant positions, uh, positions where there is no personnel or physical person present in those areas. So um, looking at the number of certified positions we've had, of course we know that those, num those positions have decreased each year due to, um, as it's tied or correlated to our enrollment, you can see from March 2018 uh, through March of 2021, which is this current school year, that the, the number of positions have declined, but also the number of limited service teachers has been on a decline as well as our number of positions not filled. So the number that we kind of track uh, specifically is the number of true vacancies. And as you can see, compared to March 2018, uh, that spring is when we actually uh, reinstituted a, a, a full-time recruiter in this position. We've been working to make sure that we get certified teachers in those positions. And we've been on a steady decline of vacancy, which of course means that our staffing position has increased over the past three years. So where in spring of 2018, our staffing positions, uh, we closed out the year at about 87%. Uh, this year in March, we uh, hit close to 96% uh, as it relates to our staff. And so we are definitely making our moves in the correct direction. So this is a just a graphic representation of what we've seen on the previous slide. Um, again, with the recruiter being instituted in the summer of 2018, um, we're, we're making those strides and moving in, in the right direction. So not quite where we want to be yet, but definitely a huge improvement from um, what we were back in 2018 to where we are now. So as it relates to projections, um, current, currently um, our current vacancies for May uh, in 2019, we had 460 true vacancies, uh, which put us at a vacancy percentage of about 24.6%. Um, if you fast forward to where we are now, and these were the numbers from this past Tuesday, uh, our true vacancy numbers are um, compared to last year and the year before are dramatically decreased. Um, and we're already at a vacancy percentage of about 10.7%. So that puts us about 89% staff and with the work and the strategies that we're putting in place for this summer, uh, preparing for school in the start of August of 21, we, um, we, we, <clears throat> we're striving to be 95% or higher uh, which will put us on par to where we were, uh, when, where we are now, where we're ending the school year for 20 to, uh, for the 2020 2021 school year. Just as a point of reference, when we began the school year last year, we were at 218 true vacancies. So, as you can see, the true vacancy number that we currently hold is already below where we were when we started last year. And so, uh, we expect that number to decrease. 
Um, when we started school, this current school year, we were at 63 people in the limited service positions. That's currently holding at 13. And uh, we, we actually have a strategy in place of where we plan to identify anyone that we have in limited service positions and analyze their potential for certification to make sure that we can convert those individuals into certified teachers as well, uh, which puts us um, slightly above our mark where we have positions not filled from 155. Currently, we're, we're at 187. So um, with, with the lead off that we currently have, preparing to move into the spring and the summer months, getting ready for the start of school in August, we, we feel very strongly and very confident about our ability to be able to get as close to 100% fully staffed uh, as we prepare for the beginning of the school year. So what are our current initiatives that we have in place? So um, one of the things that we always focus on and we look at are our provisionally certified teachers. Um, if you uh, can recall, uh, there was an article that was released in the Mississippi Today in spring of 2020 that talked about the, the barriers that we were experiencing uh, converting our provisionally licensed certified teachers to either a year two provisional license or um, a fully certified teacher. Uh, we had a conversion rate of about 3.7% a year ago. So with the, the, the strategies that we've put in place and the work that we've been uh, intentionally, the attention that we've intentionally given to our provision certified teachers, <clears throat> we set an initial goal for this year of converting at least 100 individuals from year one or provisional certification to uh, year two or better licensure. And so as of right now in spring of 2021, our conversion rate has increased from 3.7% to 35.4%. Uh, and uh, we've converted um, 115 of the individuals who were provisioned license to have a three-year license. And um, of those 390, we have 23 individuals who have um, become fully certified in their area of certification. And um, basically why, why this is important is because those individuals with those three year and five year licenses, these are individuals that we can submit uh, and retain. It increases our ability to retain these teachers into these uh, positions to help reduce those staffing numbers that we were looking at earlier. So being able to convert our teachers from one year provisional licenses to either a three year or five year standard um, means that we can offer them a contract year after year and uh, work on those strategies that we need to do to make sure that we retain these teachers in our classrooms for years to come. Um, looking at our hard to fill positions, we have three major areas of need which make up approximately 50, more than 50% of our staffing need. These are in the area of elementary education, K-5, uh, mathematics, uh, and then uh, special education. Uh, many of the barriers we've experienced have revolved around certification barriers, particularly in the areas of elementary ed. So we have put strategic uh, initiatives in place, as well as de develop partnerships with some of our uh, state institutions to kind of help, not to kind of, to help address these issues. So uh, we are still using our recruitment incentive, which is our signing bonus, and I'll talk more about that in a second. We also have established many Grow Your Own initiatives within our school district uh, to address our elementary needs. We've utilized the Mississippi Teacher Residency Program, as well as our performance-based licensure program, which we're entering into year three of those programs with the Mississippi Department of Education. We've also established for mathematics partnerships with the University of Mississippi and special education and other core area secondary subjects partnership with William Carey University. Um, and then we're also implementing or utilizing the Hewlett Foundation grant to further the work in a lot of these areas and uh, really focus in on a lot of the work that we do within recruitment in general. And we'll share some of the results of that uh, later in this presentation. So with the signing bonus, we currently are offering $5,000 offered to uh, regular new hires, which is dispersed over a period of three years. Um, and it's used as a recruitment as well as a retention strategy to get certified individuals into the classroom for a minimum of three years um, once they make a commitment to the district. 
We're currently looking at ways to expand the use of our signing bonus incentive to attract uh, not only certified teachers to our areas of highest needs, but also to uh, be able to incentivize student teachers that are working in those um, ele uh, those areas of, of need, such as elementary education. And so right now we're focusing on our critical need areas of elementary ed, math, special education, um, ESL or English as a second language and all of our critical to staff course subject areas. Um, with our Mississippi teacher residency, of course, this is a three year pilot program that was funded by the Kellogg Foundation. Um, the, the teachers that participate in this particular program end up earning a dual certification in elementary education and special education while also earning their uh, degree in elementary education through our university partner at Mississippi State University in Meridian. Um, during this program, our residents, are, which basically function as teacher assistants, and in some cases, teachers of, of record, are mentored by veteran teachers. So they have an extremely high experience as it relates to being mentored and supported and trained so that by the time they become fully fledged certified teachers of record in their own classroom, they're day one ready, which is the goal of the program. So currently we have 15 residents, five from cohort one and, and 10 from cohort two. And we are currently uh, in the process of finalizing and onboarding 12 new residents uh, for cohort three. And I just wanted to take a moment and highlight our very first graduate from the Mississippi Teacher Residency, uh, Mrs. Felicia Fleming. She uh, currently works as a second grade assistant in Span Elementary. And since she has completed the program, she will be serving as an elementary teacher at Span Elementary beginning for the 21-22 school year. We also have three more graduates from cohort one that will be uh, graduating this upcoming fall. Mr. Ryan Johnson at Pecan Park Elementary, Quita Nichols at Pecan Park, and then uh, Ms. Tasha Thompson, who will be finishing her degree and obtaining her certification in December of this year. So uh, we we did invite them to the call. We just wanted to make take a moment and recognize them here with us today on their accomplishments. Uh, also, along the same line as Mississippi Teacher Residency, uh, our district is participating in the performance-based licensure pilot. And this pilot was designed as an alternative licensure pathway for individuals who struggle specifically with passing practice exams and uh, other certification barriers. Uh, these participants are issued a three year license in any area to participate um, in this particular study. Uh, strategically, we use this to help address our elementary teaching need. So currently we have 21 participants in our PBL pilot, 14 from cohort one, seven from cohort two. Uh, we actually just completed the renewal application this week and uh, we'll have an opportunity to onboard anywhere from five to ten new applicants for the third cohort moving forward for this school year. Currently our university partnerships for certification in place again with the University of Mississippi um, those who participate are eligible to receive a full master's of education and teaching arts degree from uh, the University of Mississippi with the emphasis in mathematics instruction. So currently we have three participants enrolled. All of these participants have received their alternate route certification and are currently uh, completing the program. Uh, and they are actively employed in teaching mathematics within our school district and we're working this summer to to get more of our uh, mathematics teachers enrolled through this partnership. Um, our partnership with William Carey is focused on certification requirements, completing certification requirements, uh, particularly in the area of special education and some of our critical to field core area endorsements, such as ELA mathematics and science. Uh, right now we have 21 participants enrolled for this current spring. So they're finishing up their spring term this week with finals. Um, and will be eligible to receive their three year alternate route teaching license uh, moving into the summer and they'll begin their internship requirements starting in the fall. Um, we're actively recruiting for available slots this summer for enrollment and we've had one Miss J Rawls who's an English teacher at Murr who's actually completed the requirements through this program and we have four who are already certified and just awaiting to complete their internship starting in fall of 2021.
So the uh, currently our recruitment projects, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do uh, to support work around recruitment was to do a film project. So a um, couple of weeks ago, I think in uh, late March, early April, uh, we completed filming on our uh, district-wide video project where we recorded five different video projects, our top five uh, reasons to join JPS video. Uh, we also did a district overview video that included uh, Dr. Green, Dr. Cormack, our chief of staff, and many other uh, uh, district leaders across the district. Um, our location video, uh, our JPS candidate profiles, where we highlight um, the, the four different types of candidates that we're looking to onboard within the district, new hires, career changers, veteran teachers, uh, as well as para, uh, paraprofessionals. And then also we did a JPS, our teachers, our heroes video. So the film completed back in August, all of, um, not August, in April, all of these videos are currently being edited. And at this time, I wanted to preview or, uh, yeah, preview our top five video. I want to make sure before I do that, that I have the sharing set up properly. Are the top five reasons why Jackson Public Schools, Jackson Public Schools, Jackson Public Schools needs to be at the top of your list. According to our very own teachers. Reason number five, location, location, location. As the capital city in Mississippi, we're centrally located in our state and in the south. In Jackson, you can enjoy the best of city life and the great outdoors. Reason number four, school leadership. At Jackson Public Schools, we value talented and empowered teams. And our school leaders help to make that happen. They strive to create supportive environments to help our teachers truly grow. Reason number three, benefits. Jackson Public Schools takes care of you and your family. Health insurance, life insurance, retirement, and many opportunities at nearby universities here in the city of Jackson. Reason number two, our relationships. While we have 53 schools and 24,000 scholars, we are a family. Our amazing community is the biggest reason why we stay in Jackson Public Schools. We truly support and care about each other professionally and personally. And reason number one, impact on students' lives. If you're looking to make a long-lasting impact on the lives of students, you can do it right here in Jackson Public Schools every single day. What are you waiting for? 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 We. 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 We are JPS. All right. So that's just a, a, a small clip of the video project that we're doing. And uh, we recruited uh, teachers and district employees from all across uh, the district to help participate in that. And it's gonna be a big part of the recruitment work that we're using moving forward. We have, uh, again, that's just one. So we have uh, four more videos that are in production and in edit now um, that we'll be able to re uh, reveal. They'll be uploaded and placed strategically on the district website to share with uh, individuals who are looking to join our dynamic JPS team. Um, and as Dr. Green mentioned earlier, currently uh, we just <clears throat> concluded today, round one of our Teach, GP, uh, Teach JPS Thursdays virtual hiring chat series. Um, typically every spring we have a district-wide JPS job fair where we invite individuals from all across the city uh, and beyond to come and meet with us and talk to our administrators and inquire about uh, opportunities to be employed with the district. But obviously, due to uh, the pandemic and COVID-19, we had to change our format. So we came up with this virtual series where each week organized by feeder patterns, individuals kind of have the same opportunity uh, just in a smaller virtual setting to, to do the same things. And so uh, uh, we we actually advertise and reg have the individuals register for the event through Eventbrite. Uh, we're able to share that information with our administrators and direct them to our district website to apply for positions. The feedback uh, from the candidates as well as our administrators has been overwhelmingly positive and supportive. 
So it's definitely something that we um, plan to do in perpetuity as we look to reach that goal of 100% staffing within the district. Are there any questions? I don't have any questions, but I am just amazed at what you've been able to accomplish in three years. It's great. And it's great to know that we are growing our own. So my compliments. Mm -hmm. Here, here. Thank you so much. And it's not, not without the assistance and help expertise of our dynamic team of leaders here in Jackson Public Schools. So it's, it's been it's been great. It's been definitely work, but it's been <laughs> fun work, purposeful work. And so uh, we're excited about the results that we're getting and, and excited to do more as we move forward. Dr. Knowles, very impressive, creative. If I were looking for a job, you would have recruited me. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. That's that's excellent. What what we mm -hmm. what we that's what we're going for. We want people to want to come out of retirement to come and join our team and leave. <laughs> I that's think it may be a little late. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. We didn't quite break through that retirement uh, barrier, Mrs. Hillier. <laughs> we'll think about it. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, you got me thinking about going back to school now. <laughs> Teacher track. <laughs> that was awesome. awesome. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you, um, Dr. Knowles, and to the entire team, um, small but mighty recruitment team, um, and the partnership with other uh, members of Team JPS just for um, the vision. Um, for setting some bold goals around recruitment and, and, and hiring and staffing, um, and then setting out and, and learning from others around the country. You know, some of the strategies we're using here, folks, are things that you see in much larger uh, districts and, and um, other competitive markets. And so we're really uh, seeking to, to continue to grow and, and to play chess, not checkers. As <laughs> as it relates to staffing and, and building the team that we need to serve our children and families. So again, thank you to Dr. Knowles and the entire team. Uh, for anyone who might be listening and is interested in joining Team JPS, please do visit our website at www.jackson.k12.ms.us to learn more and to register for one of the upcoming events or just to get some more information or, or talk to someone who can support you and counsel you on your, uh, your journey. Uh, I would be remiss board members um, and, and to others who are joining us tonight if I did not mention that this past Saturday, May the 1st, while folks were off enjoying their uh, weekends was actually the official um, National Principals Day. So each year principals are celebrated on May 1st for their commitment to leading schools and creating the conditions where our scholars can prepare for a bright future. And this school year has been incredibly difficult as, and I think that's probably still an understatement. And our principals have worked hard to ensure the safety of all and, and the continuous learning for all of our scholars. So I wanna uh, send a sincere, on behalf of all of JPS and the JPS community, Sincere uh, thank you to all of our outstanding principals for the work that they do and for their unwavering commitment to serving our scholars, families, and communities. So let's give them a round of applause. Virtual applause. And then lastly, um, as was mentioned in the video, um, this is actually Teacher Appreciation Week. And it's celebrated annually in May, and we set, it, set aside the first week of the month to honor and, and thank our educators. Over the past year, our teachers, much like our school leaders, uh, have worked throughout the pandemic to support all of our JPS scholars um, in addressing their well being and their academic progress. While it was difficult um, throughout, really, uh, they made it happen. 
And so uh, we say thank you to all of our teachers. The fact that um, the fact is we should not wait until May to celebrate our teachers uh, because we can all probably remember a teacher who inspired us in some way. I've spoken here before about um, Mrs. Granberry, my third grade teacher, as well as um, uh, Mrs. Gunn, Cassie Gunn, my, uh, my counselor, um, educators who care deeply about me and, and my progress. And so um, I'm sure each and every one of us, I, I hope each and every one of us can think back to a teacher who really, really touched them um, and played some small or big role in helping them to achieve their, their goals in life. So again, just wanna thank all of our teachers, um, let you know that we do love you and, and appreciate you. See some of our wonderful teachers uh, posted up here, the pictures posted here. Um, and just want all of our teachers to know that um, we've, we've got your backs. These are actually our teachers. I believe these are our teachers of the year. Um, and I see our, uh, for, from their individual schools. And then I see second row, almost to the right, um, our uh, teacher of the year for the district. And so again, just wanna thank them all. Um, and ask everyone uh, as, you, as you have option or, or opportunity to please take them a moment to thank a teacher. It's so, so important. Um, for the latest news and event information throughout JPS, please download our mobile app, visit our website or connect with us on Twitter and Facebook. And, um, and of course, go to our YouTube channel uh, that's all that I have this evening, and I uh, just want to say thank you, uh, President Johnson, for this time, members of the board, and that concludes my announcements and remarks. Thank you, Dr. Green. I also want to ditto the thank you to principals and teachers and um, give board members an opportunity um, to do the same or any comments on Dr. Green's report. Just to say here, here, it's such a special time and we certainly appreciate this team of, uh, from all the way around. Uh, it's such a joy to see all the wonderful progress we've made as a community, as, as a staff of educators, all of us together. Uh, it just fills my heart with a lot of joy, uh, thinking about how far we've come and the hard work we've accomplished together. And then once we, um, and I want to say something now, Madam President, that I didn't say last time. I want to give a shout out to uh, Dr. Murray, uh, who is retiring, and he actually retired uh, to our last board meeting officially, but he, we just want you to know how much we appreciate your leadership in one of the darkest times of this district, and uh, we bid you uh, good prayers of happiness and good time as you enter your retirement. And I uh, just wanted to let you know. But yes, that said, it's just a wonderful uh, way that this district has, has moved on after uh, Frederick Murray, Dr. Murray stood in the gap for us <laughs> to get us where we are today. So thank you, Dr. Murray and Dr. Green and your team. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Harrison. That Thank you for uh, recognizing um, Dr. Murray as well. We all feel the same way. Thank you so much for your service to this district. I, I would like to also thank Dr. Murray for the splendid job he did in keeping the district afloat, afloat at a time when we were all pretty nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, you did an outstanding job, and we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, teachers, whether you are, um, you have been named a teacher of the year, each one of you is a teacher of the year, because each one of you, uh, I'm sure, works very hard every day to educate our children. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and keep up the good work. <laughs> I'd echo those sentiments, and I would just add one thing on top of it all. And, and I will say, especially with Dr. Murray, it feels like that was ages ago. 
<laughs> like we're in a totally different world. Um, but grateful for you. But also, I would just say to our teachers and administrators, the entire team, principals, everyone, recognize that um, we know what this past year has been like. Mm-hmm. And we know what you've gone through. And the trauma, the pain, all of it. And grateful now at this moment more than ever for all of you. I'd just like to add on to everybody, everything everybody said, and especially for Dr. Murray. Thank you. I know you took a lot of heat, especially from us over at Wingfield, because we was bringing it hard, <laughs> trying to fight for our principal, and, uh, and you took a good brunt of it, and but you kept your level of cool, and you explained everything to us, um, and you helped us get through it. You helped us get through it, and we appreciate that, and we appreciate the changes that you've brought, you know, even to the district, even over at Wingfield. And um, thank you, thank you for your service. And all our teachers and all our principals, I mean, I feel like since from being a parent, moving over here to a board member, this whole district has done a 360, like complete turnaround. And I am so proud. I'm so proud of the work that you all are doing and you're doing an amazing job and I'm just, proud to be in the number to be named among you all in the greatness that we have here in the district. Thank you. And I'll just jump in um, from a from a parent's perspective, you know, every morning I'm usually eating my breakfast in the kitchen and my son is sitting on the, the couch and, and, and the teacher, his, his, his seventh grade homeroom teacher every morning says every student's name. And when they say here, she says, good morning. Good morning. She addresses every student, you know, and, and um, they had a good year. Um, and you can see the through line from all this work. You know, there, there were first year teachers that were some of my children's favorite. Um, there were there were veterans teachers that pushed them. Um, you know, you know, there's there's principals pushing those teachers. I mean, just all the work and, and um, we're looking forward to the end of the school year. But I'm also, um, again, just from a, incredibly grateful for all the work that just we will never see as, as parents that went into making this year possible. Um, I'm just I'm very grateful for it and just proud to be part of this. And I know sometimes I push and ask a lot of questions and probably, you know, <laughs> some of the team, but um it's it's all it's all working towards the same goal and it's it's to be a part of this team is something special so just thank you all and to the teachers and principals on the line um we can't we we will never be able to do enough to to thank you for what you do so thanks um miss johnson for the opportunity to share those and i guess i didn't give mr or dr murray a shout out you know, Dr. Murray, I, um, in my head, I, I envision one day you you would uh, you would throw out the opening pitch at the new baseball stadium. You know, reminiscent of your old days playing second base. Uh, but that's uh, you know we're, we're not there yet. Maybe we can get, bring you back. But what that's that's for for in the future. <laughs> and that was because I I threw that out there because that is. A, you know, he stood, you know, we can use the analogy stood in the gap, but like when the bond, when we were in the, when we were in the throes of that bond referendum, he did, he, he stood there right with us and took it all. And, and the re, all these pictures that we love and see, and um, I can't wait for these new facilities. And so, I mean, that, that's, that's part of, that's part of your legacy too. Here, here. Well said. Doc, Attorney Johnson, uh, President Johnson, do you mind if I say a word? I, I, um, so one, Dr. Murray's not gone. <laughs> That's first. <laughs> Dr. Murray's not gone. He is still hanging in there. Uh, he's had a heck of a day dealing with some things. Uh, Dr. Murray is still still in there with us. All right, so don't y'all give me any heart attacks <laughs> about Dr. Murray being gone. He's not gone yet, but yes, um, you know, I've, I've said to Dr. Murray and to others 
uh, over the years, you know, when you've earned your retirement, you've earned your retirement. And for daggone sure, when you've earned it in education, you, you've earned it. And we celebrate you. And this brother, y'all have said it, so I won't try to repeat all of that, but this brother has done so much um, for this district, but for me. And, and he could have been a different kind of guy, a different kind of, of, of leader, different kind of person. Um, but the level of integrity, support, commitment to the district over, over self, over title, any of that, um, I am absolutely, Dr. Murray, absolutely in your debt. Um, and, and I said to you early on, um, I, I appreciate you. Um, and and I'm, I'm so glad to have had you on this team to support me in my transition and just continuing to do the work that you love to do. And you've made some major contributions. So thank you on behalf of the entire team. And, and, and just know, we, we, intend to, uh, we intend to do a little better than these uh, words here um, before you sail off into the golf sunset. Um, so look for that, brother. All right. Um, thank you, board members, for your comments. Um, and now we're going to move on to um, public comment. I know that we have um, two individuals for public comment. Um, community members who would like to participate in public comment can email the request to roswilliams at jackson.k12.ms.us, no later than 515, or log into the Zoom meeting between 5 and 515 and indicate their desire to comment. Um, before we get started, I want to set expectations for those speaking. You will, of course, have three minutes for your comments. Um, the, board, the board believes in public comments, and we believe it's very important. Um, we will listen and consider your comments, but we will not respond at this time. So the first person for public comment Um, Ms. Erica Smith. Ms. Smith. Is Ms. Smith still on? Yes. Good afternoon. How you all doing? Good. Um, I sent an email to um, Ms. Williams. I'm not sure if you're able to show those pictures. I wanted to share them at the board meeting. But um, I'll read what my email was, my concern and my concern. Um, I'm a teacher and a coach at Provine High School. I'm also a graduate of Provine High School. I've been at the district with the district for 18 years and I've been at Provine for nine. And I wanted to address the board about the conditions of our facilities as far as the, and as well as gender equality. As far as the facilities, my concern in particular is the girls locker room at, at the, in the coach's office at Provine. I tried for over four years to get a leak fix that started in my office with me submitting work orders. The last work order I submitted myself was in 2018. Um, I spoke to my principals at the time from 2018 up until now uh, with the athletic director. And, uh, in 2019 and th 2020, I was told work orders were submitted by the assistant AD, Mr. Woody, and by our office manager, Ms. Lawson. The leak has spread to the girls' locker room that has called mold and mildew in both my office and the girls' locker room. I consider the girls' locker room in my office out of order and unsafe to use. In 2019, the school principal, athletic directors, architects, and facilities personnel had a meeting about renov renovations. I was told that the project for renovation would be put on hold. The bathrooms at Provine have been renovated with the exception of the bathrooms in the gym. The boys' locker room has had some issues such as ventilation issues and a broken window. They have been fixed. Contractors, carpenters, and plumbers have come to look at the damage in the girls' locker room for several years, but no repairs have been made. There is a visit in the boys' locker room, but there is not a visit in the girls' locker room. The girls' basketball team, volleyball team, and female students in the gym class, they don't have an alternate space to dress other than the bathroom that's for everybody, the girls' bathroom. Uh, lockers were purchased for the field house for football. Extra lockers were put in the um, first installed in the boys' locker room. The girls got what was left. Girls only have eight lockers. We have 12 girls on the basketball team right now. Every player on the boys' uh, basketball team has a locker. 
I've, I've currently resigned because there have been promises, improvements, um, and changes made in the district. And, you know, they haven't been known. I want to be released from our country. I know the issue will be addressed um, in the next board meeting. But, you know, I, I found out that my male counterparts as a head coach and a basketball coach have been given grace. All these issues to me is a Title IX issue. Um, as last week, the carpet was pulled up. I was told tile would be installed. It's still leaking. So why would you put tile down and there's still a leak? I've gone through the proper steps to get this done. And I, I feel like I have dilapidated, dilapidated conditions that I'm working in. Ms. Williams had pictures. Um, I taught four preps this year. Um, I, I just don't feel value as an employee, but I'm more or less coming as an alumni for my students, for my girls. I would, can you share those pictures, please, Ms. Williams, so that they can see? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. I know you probably can't respond to me, but even in a board meeting, share them. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Smith. I did your, um, share that with the board. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Um, I've been advised that we take Ms. Gavon's public comment in executive session. So the executive session portion of public comment will be at the end of the meeting. Are there any other individuals for public comment? That'll be all. All right, then we will move on to information only items. Dr. Salgado. <clears throat> Good evening, President Johnson, honorable members of the board, Dr. Green, JPS team, and visitors. The administration is recommending to the board that Mississippi College School of Education uh, be contracted to provide student teacher internship in our district for the 21-22 school year. This agreement will uh, provide Mississippi College students the opportunity for hands-on teaching, learning, and practical classrooms in our district. We agreed to take the students, match them up with uh, the correspondent teacher, and provide support uh, as they require. Um, this uh, also is a part of our effort to increase the number of the pool of teachers who apply to our district. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Salgado. Board members, are there any questions or comments? I don't see any, and so therefore we'll move on to Ms. Robinson. Good evening, for President Johnson, board members, Dr. Green. At the, at the request of the board, we have the pleasure of providing a bond update at the first meeting of each month. Okay, in tonight's presentation, we will provide a, a, a update on the construction projects, uh, the project, projected board action dates for the remaining projects, uh, the updated financial report, and also we'll do some ESSER two and three updates. And Dr. Green had shared those uh, in his report. Um, we will just expand on that. So we'll start with our construction updates and Ms. Franklin will provide that update. Ms. Franklin. Okay. Good evening, board members, Dr. Green, President Johnson, it's my pleasure to go over our construction updates for the month of May. We'll start at one of our phase two projects, Marshall Elementary School. Uh, at Marshall, we have several projects that will take place. Um, the photos that we're looking at are photos of the demolition in our one set of our uh, restrooms here. Two sets of restrooms will be renovated. We can see in these photos, all of the fixtures have been removed. Uh, the wall tile has is being removed. Um, we'll also get some site drainage repairs. At Marshall, we, we've had issues ongoing for years where water comes, has infiltrated under doors and, um, and some low spots coming back into the building. So we're uh, gonna repair some uh, site drainage and as well as do some regrading. We'll also get all new exterior doors at Marshall Elementary School. 
Um, next, we'll take a look at our phase one projects, which are primarily the high schools. At Callaway High School, we've seen some previous projects here. Um, today, we're gonna be looking at our restroom renovations. In this photo, we can see um, where the tile has been, um, all the old wall tile was removed. We have new flooring, a new wall tile that's been installed, new lighting. In the next photos, you'll see some of the fixtures being installed at Callaway High School in the restrooms. We're uh, still in progress in some of those restrooms. Um, and some of the floor, existing floors are being kept and just steam cleaned because some, the flooring was in good condition, but we're, they are receiving all new fixtures, wall tile, um, new lighting. Um, yes, uh, next slide, please. At Forest Hill High School, uh, we've seen several projects here, but tonight we'll be looking at our Coliseum renovation. We've seen similar projects at Callaway and Jim Hill with our um, bleacher and um, gym floor replacement. Here, the gym floors are being replaced. We see the existing concrete uh, piers. In the next slide, we'll see the um, new steel beams going in, as well as the wooden sleepers. And we did have some delay in this with the um, getting the wood for the project because there are some uh, supply shortages with lumber um, as well as uh, steel. So this project has been delayed a bit, but um, it is moving forward now. In our next slide, we'll um, see our restroom renovations at Jim Hill High School. Um, here, uh, the restrooms at Jim Hill are receiving all new epoxy floors, new wall tile, all new fixtures, new LED lighting. Um, in the next photos, we'll see our laboratories being installed as well as our drinking fountains. On the left, we see our new um, stainless, uh, I mean, solid surface counters, uh, laboratories being installed, all new uh, urinals, toilets, and new drinking fountains. Our next slide is at Murrah High School. We have restroom renovations ongoing here. On the left, we see the new drinking fountains with bottle fillers being installed. On the right, this is a photo of our girls' restroom. It's received uh, new epoxy floors, all new partitions, fixtures, LED lighting, as well as all new um, stainless steel accessories. Our next slide is at Provine High School. Um, we've talked about the kitchen plumbing uh, replacement project before. It involved uh, updating all of the plumbing underneath the kitchen, a new grease trap, a new sump pump, also replacing a sewer line throughout the courtyard. On the left, we see the demolition of that courtyard where we um, also replaced some catch basins in that area. On the right, that area, um, the catch basin has been installed and um, we've resided that area. In the next photo, we'll also see the, um, the courtyard area at Provine. This is uh, the area where the grease trap has been replaced and the new sump pump, it's in place and that area has been resided and we've got new sidewalks leading up into the, to the courtyard. Our next slide is at Wingfield High School. Uh, we saw before in a, uh, our previous bond update where the solid wall had been removed. Uh, on the left, we see the new storefront has been installed where that allow visibility from the library to the corridor. On the right, we see the new millwork and solid surface counters have been installed. Um, next, we'll talk about some other projects that have, um, in our next slide, we'll see some other projects that have already come to you for approval. And we're looking forward to getting those started um, in the month of May, especially as we end testing at our schools. Um, it's a great timing for these projects. Uh, we're looking forward to starting our restroom renovations at Boyd Elementary School, general improvements at several elementary schools, including Smith, Sykes, Walton, North Jackson Elementary, Dawson, Baker, Key, Lester. Also our interior upgrades at North, Northwest Middle School. And this is um, just getting the school ready for our merger with Bailey Middle School. Also some recent projects that we've opened bids for 
are Lanier and Jim Hill parking improvements. And projects that will be opening bids for later this month are Hughes Field renovations, as well as Brinkley and Powell uh, general improvements. Next, Ms. Robinson will give us um, our projected board action dates, as well as our financial update. Thanks, Ms. Franklin, for, for providing those updates. Board members, uh, this slide gives a um, timeline for projected board action. At the April 20th board, we initially projected bringing four projects for your approval. We exceeded that expectation and were able to bring an additional six projects. So 10 projects were approved at the April 20th uh, board meeting. Uh, this month in May, we project uh, bringing 10 projects for board action. And tonight's agenda includes the Witten roof replacement for your approval. So we anticipate uh, bringing an, an additional nine projects in May. And the next slide shows our June projections. In June, we anticipate bringing nine projects. And as Ms. Franklin shared, we'll, we will bring Hughes Field re renovations to you. Um, that project did bid uh, over a year ago. It was over budget. And now we, um, it, we have uh, revised the scope and expanded it. And we were able to do some of the additional uh, $5 million in, in revenue and be able to put that towards Hughes Field. So the other projects listed to come in June would be Brinkley, Chastain, Powell, Johnson Structural Repairs, renovations at Lake, McLeod, Pecan Park Structural Repairs, and Rains, renovations and Rains. So we are excited about um, continuing to bring these projects for your approval. And the next slide shows our bond um, expense analysis. So each month we um, provide this, this slide to show how we are um, being good stewards of the money. Um, the orange shows the amount that has been expended. So to date, as of April 30th, um, we've expended over $24 um, million and um, the gray represents the amount encumbered. We've ex uh, encumbered over 19 million. So uh, we've almost encumbered or expended $44 million of the seven, $70 million in um, bond revenue. So um, it's an improvement, a great improvement of 56% uh, to 62% from the last um, bond update. And on tonight's um, um, board agenda with the Witten roof replacement, it's an additional $1.8 million that will be encumbered. So we're excited about continuing to um, see um, the progress that we're making in order to um, expend those funds. Next slide. Now we know that the bond referendum was initially $65 million. Uh, we were able to capitalize and get an additional $5 million. So we're working with $70 million currently, but with the great needs of the district, we know that that was not enough. Um, Dr. Green pointed out the, the plan for our ESSER two and three funds. ESSER two, we're utilizing those for indoor air quality upgrades, and that includes HVAC, equipment controls, and air purification systems. Um, it includes window replacement and repairs and exterior door replacements. The next slide shows some additional projects that we can do with ESSER 2 as well. And those are uh, water quality improvements. So restroom renovations, water and sewer line replacements, kitchen plumbing um, upgrades, water bottle filler sta stations, and also the opportunity to do outdoor learning environments. So these are the COVID funds that will allow us to, um, or CARES Act funds to rethink what we're doing to both in, in improve the indoor air quality within the school, but also think of outdoor learning environments where um, um, students can, um, can also learn. Next slide. As far as, um, the ESSER funds, since they are federal funds, there are some things that we do need to make sure that we're in compliance. Um, one is that construction uh, contracts have to include some federal fund requirements. And in addition to that, we're gonna make sure that we're planning with the instructional side that all the ESSER, ESSER funds are aligned with our curriculum needs so that we can um, enhance and improve our facility uh, facilities in order to um, meet our strategic plan of excellence for all. And the last thing, um, some of the ESSER two and three projects with the number of projects, we will identify some additional staffing support that will be needed um, 
due to the um, complexity of some of the um, the projects, um, uh, the federal regulations are saying that we do need, you know, some additional um, um, construction assessment um, um, uh, CA support to make sure that everything is installed according to federal guidelines. So again, board members, we're excited about the progress that we've made to date with the um, the seventy million dollar. Um, bond revenue to date, and we're looking forward to the improvements we can make with the extra two and three uh, funding that's coming. So if you have any questions, that concludes the presentation. Thank you, Ms. Robinson and Ms. Franklin. Oh, go ahead, Dr. Harrison, with your question. No, I was, no, I was just going to thank them for their work, Ms. Uh, Franklin and Ms. Robinson, just knowing how far we've come, and it looks like we're going to beat our goals. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other comments or questions, board members? Um, Comment. Um, I, I too would like to say that you are doing an excellent job of keeping us informed um, regarding the spending of the bond money and uh, all of this and we just really appreciate all of the hard work that we know is going into your being able to do this so thank you thank you thank you um ms johnson i have two okay. questions um and um ms robinson i'll direct them to you although they may be um ms miller may need to jump in on it the first is um you mentioned the five million dollars for hughes field um, what's the actual amount of uh, of earnings or rev additional revenue recognized um, uh, above and beyond the bond issuance? Do we know that figure? I'm sorry, Dr. Sivak, I was trying to unmute. It's about six million. It was about six million dollars. Okay, six million. Yes. Sir. And, um, and, and then Ms. Robinson, you mentioned, so is, is the plan for five of that to go towards Hughes Field? Um, well, we had um, initially, you know, the bond ref, the bond, refer, re, bond referendum was 65 million. So there was a, an additional 5 million in um, bond revenue that we've allocated to various projects, not just to Hughes Field. So I think um, the current allocation for Hughes Field was about 4 million. Okay. And I can confirm that amount and a million has been used for other projects. Okay. Um, Ms. Miller, I know we have a finance committee meeting uh, that we're working on. Um, would, would you be able to get the exact earnings figure for the um, for that meeting? Yes, sir. And um, I will also get, because of course we've had interest earnings as well. So mm -hmm. that was an initial, that was the initial um, deposit back in 2018, but we've had um, investment income and I will have an updated investment report um, for the finance committee meeting. Absolutely. Okay, great. And then the second question I, I was, I had, um, Ms. Robinson, you mentioned the project that's on the docket for tonight uh, at Witten, which is a roof project. Do we, and this again, this may be for Ms. Miller, do we have any, I, I went back, I couldn't find the budget. Um, I, I just wasn't, I didn't find the budget updates, um, but do we have any money for hailstorm, hailstorm funds left over? Or have we used all of those? Those are pretty much all gone, uh, Dr. Sivek. If you recall a couple of years ago, not only did we use that for the hailstorm repair, we also used some of those funds to balance the budget. Um, and so those are very, very close to being depleted. I will, I can give you a exact figure on that um, at our finance committee meeting as well. Okay, just checking, looking under rock. All rocks, I understand. <laughs> All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments for members? If not, thank you, uh, Ms. Robinson and Ms. Franklin. And now we'll move on to information action items. Attorney Robinson. Good evening, all. Uh, I present to the board for its consideration the approval of a letter of engagement between the Jackson Public School District and Duff and Phelps LLC. The purpose of this engagement is to provide the district a property insurance appraisal for use in the district's connection with the internal analysis of our insurance needs related to property. 
The identified property includes all 136 buildings and personal property that is defined as well as machinery and equipment, office furniture, fixtures and office equipment. The appraisal will provide JPS with an insurable value defined as the cost of reproduction, meaning the estimated amount required to reproduce a duplicate or a replica of the entire property at one time in like kind of material. Uh, the district, we, we cannot determine when the district has had a comprehensive appraisal of this level. And it is recommended that these sorts of appraisals occur every three to five years to be utilized in the way that we value our property in conjunction with our bids for insurance pro proposals going forward. Um, this proposal has been budgeted in the risk management budget and the service cost is listed in the executive summary. Um, I'm happy to at, answer any questions that the board might have related to this proposal. Thank you, Attorney Robinson. Um, board members, no questions, comments? If not, is there a motion to approve information action item A? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Ms. Thompson has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. Marshall Thomas. Good evening, everyone. The administration is recommending for board approval no. the CTE local application for fiscal year 2022 at the Career Development Center. Uh, career and technical education programs support high school students in gaining the academic, technical, and employability skills necessary to pursue entry-level employment and to enroll in post-secondary education or advanced workforce training. High school students enrolled in CTE coursework that the district and state has aligned to high demand jobs. All enrolling students earn credits toward high school graduation and many students have opportunities to earn national certifications in several programs and several CTE courses are offered as dual enrollment, dual credit. This local application will cover funding for salaries, capitalized equipment, adult programs and other costs as outlined in the state plan of the Call D. Perkins Five. Um, this local application allows the district to continue offering CTE services in accordance with the state plan. Um, the local application was developed using the estimated funding notice and current MSIS data. And um, after board approval, the estimated funding notice will be used, but upon receiving the actual funding notice after July 1st, um, the budget will be revised. The current allocation um, is for federal funding is $443,282.03. Salaries um, for state funding is $1,319,655.80. State funding for adult education is $20,000 for a total estimated funding of $1,782,937.83. This concludes um, the recommendation um, for our local plan application. Thank you, Ms. Marshall Thomas. Board members, are there any questions or comments? Dr. Seifat? I had a question. Um, Ms. Marshall Thomas, thank you for sending over the placement report. Um, uh, so a couple just quick observations from it. Um, one, it looked like there was a high percentage of Lanier students that were going into their field of training. Um, where, uh, and so I was just wondering um, if there was some insights onto what may be um, contributing to that, which is, I think, take that as a positive. And then um, what, what, uh, what else um, would you say would be highlights from that, that placement report as well in terms of um, I mean, it was great to see that we have data on students who are going through uh, career development training um, and also the, the level of detail. Like we actually know who's going into a field, who's continuing ed. Um, so those would be my two questions, one specific to Lanier and then the other just general um, observations from where you sit about, about how we're doing with it. 
so to address your question about Lanier, um, Lanier has the Health Science Academy. And because that is um, the academy that's focused there, um, they do a lot of recruiting around um, their program. And students actually um, really enjoy um, going through the program starting in, in ninth grade and then matriculating through um, their senior year. So there's been a lot of recruiting efforts that um, have gone into ensuring that those students continue to enroll each year um, in, the, in the Health Science Academy. And there's a lot of uh, participation with um, some of the health um, organizations like UMMC that works you know, side by side um, in, in the program. And I'm sorry, Dr. Seabag, what was your second question? Oh, and then the second was just general observations around um, how we're doing or, or just the overall um, you know, effectiveness of the program for, for moving students from training into, into aligned um, careers. Um, if, if you notice in the report, you know, there are certain programs that students really um, do really well in and those students you know, are easy to, to, to be placed in, um, in other fields where some programs um, it, it's not as easy. It could be based on national certifications that are required. It could be based on post-secondary coursework that's necessary for placement. So there are a combination of different things that, um, that goes into play when, when, it, when we look into placement. Um, we have a lot of creative things in place this year for new programs that we have coming up for 2022 that include some work-based learning. And I think those work-based learning opportunities is really gonna create a, um, a pathway directly into, um, into, into the workforce for those students who are interested in that pathway. I, I would just add, I, I really appreciate the question, uh, Dr. Sivak, and, and I, um, I believe there's an opportunity for us to, to um, delve a little more deeply uh, with the scholars as they, as they graduate and, or even before they graduate as they're making plans and, and applying or whether for a job or to um, uh, uh, you know, higher education or what have you. I would caution though, um, you know, we, as we talk about uh, uh, college and career readiness, um, my philosophy, and, and I believe this is shared by most of the scholars here or, or the um, educators here is that we want to give our scholars as many opportunities to explore and to uh, experience uh, different fields and all of that. And so, um, you know, when I first looked at the at the placement report, I was a little disappointed that we didn't have more scholars placed in those fields. Um, but but I don't know that that's fair because you know we want them to have a broad range of experiences and and maybe they are always have always wanted to be a, an architect or an attorney and they go to college for that and then find somewhere down the road. You know what? I actually do want to open my own. Um, restaurant. And I kind of reach back to some of my culinary arts uh, experiences. And so the point being, um, I, I think there's room for us to continue thinking through what, what's, a, what's an appropriate goal for placement in the field or continued um, uh, higher ed uh, training in that same field. Um, because I, I don't know that the goal for each and every scholar is you'll content, you'll make a decision as a teenager, continue with that on into or out of high school and into the, the, that field. So I, I hope that was clear, but, but I, I just feel like there's, there's continued conversation on goals that we might set around this and what's reasonable if we truly believe that our job is to give as much exposure as, as possible. Thank you. That both was that was very helpful. I I have a question, and I think it kind of it, it may not necessarily go at this part, but it my, it came up in my mind on this part, and that goes back to the academies. You mentioned the health um, science. So what my question is. Um, because I know this is directly for Career Development Center, but the different academies at the different high schools, what, what are we doing to let all of our incoming ninth graders and parents know about the different academies and how they can get involved with those academies, depending on what 
they want to do in life? I mean, what, what kind of recruitment or like that beautiful piece that was going on for teacher recruitment is going on for student recruitment in those, um, in, the, in that area that, that, you know, kind of technology to reach those students that want to do those particular things in those, in those different academies at those different high schools. Ms. Thompson, um, so currently for the high school academies, we have only, only four of the high schools currently have academies and that um, those four high schools are Callaway, Wingfield, Provine, and um, who's missing? Wingfield, Callaway, Lanier, and, and Provine. So th of those four high schools, um, they have parent academy nights where ninth, incoming ninth grade parents are actually invited to learn about the academies and, and a sign up for the academies and learn about um, you know, the programs and what the four year program in, entails and the benefits. So um, there's a, a, a series of events that, that may occur throughout the summer. We have um, acclimation um, that's gonna occur with incoming ninth graders. And we are planning to fold in the academy um, for, for those particular programs. And we also were looking at the students' ISPs to see if any of those students were interested in any of those academies that we would allow those students to actually attend one of those academy schools if it's listed on the ISP and is not one of the, the programs that's at our career development center. So there are some, um, some things that are going on. COVID kind of um, stumped us last year. So we, we were not as aggressive as we should have been with getting students into those four schools. Um, so starting with, in May with the parent academies, um, that are that are upcoming um, for incoming ninth graders and also during a summer camp through acclimation uh, for students that are interested. So uh, is that is that um, those four schools, those parent academies that are, are they um, feeder pattern related to those schools or they are? Yes, so they then, are. So then somebody that goes to in the Lanier feeder pattern would not necessarily know yeah, about the wing field but okay. but if you also have but if it's on your isp then that's something that the counselors could also meet with the parents and the students about as an option because this pathway is not offered at the career development center but it is available at lanier or it is available at provine or it is available at wingfield so the students and parents meet so the isp is the individual student success plan and it details exactly what career paths students are interested in. Mm -hmm. And so we have students who are interested in, in, in um, pursuing a career and technical diploma endorsement. And so if, if we have those students who want that particular diploma endorsement, then what we do is try to ensure that those students have the opportunities to, to actually complete that endorsement. It doesn't necessarily have to be offered at CDC, but if it, if it is offered at one of the four uh, academy programs, we will allow the students to attend. I, I will say though, uh, and thank you, Mrs. Marshall Thomas for, for the response um, and for providing some clarity on that. What I hear in the question is what I've heard, um, just uh, being transparent, what I've heard about um, uh, other programming that we offer in the district, um, some of the specialty programs, this latest conversation about wells and that, just a, a need for us to really, really um, uh, be more strategic and, and much more bold or be bolder about uh, the way that we talk about and promote our, our programming. And so, I, you know, outside of, you know, in addition to what um, Mrs. Marshall Thomas has shared, I, I, I definitely hear that in the question and see yet another opportunity for us to double down on how we promote our, our programming across the board. Um, whether it's for scholars to enter the program or for community support and, and you know, just so that people are, have 10 great things to say about JPS with the, the one thing that, you know, might be on the tip of the tongue. Um, thank you, Ms. Marshall Thomas and board members for all your comments and questions. Um, is there a motion to approve information action item B? So moved. Second. Second. 
Dr. Sebeck has moved. Um, Dr. Harrison has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Next board members, we have um, Dr. Smith. Great evening. To Board President Johnson, other members of the JPS School Board, Superintendent Green. It gives me great privilege to bring before you um, this evening for information action, the approval of job descriptions for our demonstration teacher and lead teacher. The lead teacher and demonstration teacher positions are positions that are funded by the Project Ignite grants. These positions will provide each of the nine identified schools in the grant to better support uh, best practices and improve teaching and learning. The demonstration teacher supports the teachers, the supporting teacher effectiveness project, better known as STEPS, professional learning community meetings, provides limited coaching and support for teachers, provides demonstration lessons, and is an active and engaged member of the school's instructional leadership team. The demonstration teacher's classroom is open to teachers as a demonstration or model classroom to focus on content and or pedagogy. The lead teacher is responsible for facilitating and supporting the STEP professional learning community meetings, coaching and supporting teachers, providing demonstration lessons, and being an active and engaged member of the school's instructional leadership team. And this concludes the rationale for the need for uh, pending approval of these positions. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Board members, are there any questions or comments? If no questions or comments, is there a motion to approve information action item C? I so move. Second. Ms. Hilliard has moved. Ms. Thompson has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Um, next, we have Dr. Merritt. And great evening, Attorney Johnson and Board of Trustees and Dr. Green. I present uh, to you for approval a memorandum of understanding with the Children's Defense Fund Southern Regional, Regional Office in collaboration with the Cortez Bryant uh, Foundation and Jackson Public Schools. Uh, this MOU is to support our scholars that are rising third graders in our summer uh, A3 program. It will uh, work with 150 students um, who are rising third graders to help support them and achieving success on the third grade uh, summative reading assessment. The Children's Defense Fund has a very evidence-based uh, curriculum that will be used to support these students. And, um, it, and, and, the, and it will be their freedom school, which not only includes academics, but is also includes a very cultural component. I'm very happy to see this come, um, this opportunity come to the district again, as it was afforded to our children during the um, during Katrina. Um, another important component of this, as I mentioned, that this is in collaboration with the Cortez uh, Bryant Foundation, who is a music module, uh, who graduated from Jackson State University. Um, this will really provide a unique opportunity for our students to be engaged and with some things around the music industry. And we know culturally that is something that um, attracts uh, our students. So I do present um, for, before you this evening, this MOU for approval. Thank you, Dr. Mayor. Board members, are there any questions or comments? I think this is an excellent Excellent idea, Dr. Murray, Dr. Merritt, I'm sorry. Excellent, excellent. Uh, it uh, gives the students an opportunity to keep abreast of current issues and they be make them more competitive with students all over. So I applaud you for that program. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Any other comments or questions, board members? If not, is there a motion um, to approve information action item D? So moved. Dr. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Ms. Hilliard has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? 
There being none, the motion is approved. Thank you, Dr. Merritt. Um, now we have Ms. Miller. Thank you, Ms. Johnson, Dr. Green, members of the board. I present to you an item that is a little bit of a departure from what we've normally done when it comes to 16 section property. Um, this is the acceptance of all the bid responses to bid number 3179 for bow hunting lease on 16 section land, which is on Sidewell Road adjacent um, to the Environmental Learning Center. So, um, Mississippi Code uh, 29341 requires that if we have any property that is classified as bow hunting, fishing, um, or anything of that type, it has to be um, bid out at the five-year intervals unless the lessee is interested in a 15-year lease. Back, um, the previous lessee... Uh. Ryan Preston, Rock House Farms, um, had the current lease. It expires on May 1st, 2021. He did um, indicate his desire to continue this lease for another five years, but because of that section, that code section, we actually have to bid that, pro bid that property out and um, actually have to open the responses at a board meeting. So I am presenting to you um, the bid response to bid number 3179. We have received one bid. We received that bid timely. We did not receive any other bids. I will have to indicate that the bid is sealed. I will open it now. I feel like a lottery winner. <laughs> Um, bid number 3179, the bid was received from Brian E. Preston doing business as Rock House Farms, LLC. I received, we've attached as a check in the amount of $4,800. This is the only bid we received. Uh, it is signed by Mr. Preston, and I find that the bid has been received in good form. I've attached a copy of the appraisal for that property of which the appraisal um, set the fair market value of the land at $4,800 per year. And I am um, presenting for your uh, approval tonight, the acceptance of the bid response for 3179 from Brian E. Preston doing business as Rock House Farms LLC in the amount of $4,800. After, uh, upon acceptance of this, um, this response, board members, I would then work with the 16 section attorney to develop the five-year lease for this property for the $4,800 and bring that lease back to you for approval at the next available board meeting. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Board members, are there any questions or comments? If none, is there a motion to approve information action item E? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Ms. Hilliard has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Miller. Thank you. Next board members, we have a consent agenda items finance. All of the consent agenda items finance have been reviewed by the board previously. We've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any other questions? If not, is there, if the, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items finance? So moved. Second. Dr. Sivak has moved. Ms. Dr. Harrison has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Next, we have the consent agenda items general. Um, all of the consent agenda yeah. items general have been reviewed by the board. Previously, we've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any other questions? If not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda general? So moved. So moved. Second. Ms. Hilliard has moved. Dr. Luckett has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Next, board members, we have the consent agenda items personnel. 
Again, all of these items have been reviewed by the board. We've had an opportunity to ask questions. Are there any further questions? If not, board members, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items personnel? So moved. Second. Dr. Harrison has moved. Ms. Hilliard has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Attorney Johnson, President Johnson? Yes, sir. Um, with the approval of the personnel matters, um, one, I just want to thank you all for your support again of the, um, the uh, uh, adjustments that we've made to our team members um, in supporting them and, and demonstrating uh, appreciation for them. And in particular, I want to uh, call out um, a, a change to our uh, executive team. Uh, you previously approved a, a move and a, a, a re-scoping of our leadership in uh, academics to our uh, deputy superintendent role. Um, and our own very own Dr. Cormack will be uh, serving in that role. Very excited about him uh, taking on that work and leading that work forward. Uh, he's done an amazing job as a chief of staff, but with him moving into that role, um, we had to identify someone to take on our chief of staff role. And so just want to thank you for your uh, approval of these items um, and signal to those who, who don't know that our very own Dr. William Merritt uh, will be our new chief of staff and will ensure that your superintendent um, has his uh, ducks in a row, <laughs> uh, dots, I's and crosses, T's in the way that uh, Dr. Cormack has so ably. So just wanna celebrate those two gentlemen uh, in their new roles and um, just again, appreciate you all for your support as we've continued to um, shift our, our district in ways that we need to, to do the, the hard work and the necessary work. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Green and congratulations. Mm -hmm. Board members, is there, there is a consideration to hold an executive session. Um, is there a motion to, is there a motion to um, stop the meeting to hold an executive session? Madam President, I move that we close the um, meeting so that we can consider holding an executive session. Second. Um, Dr. Luckett is moved. Ms. Thompson is seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Any 